In this video, I'm going to talk about manual focus. Why, how, and when. And of course, I will talk about the settings in your camera that will help you. Hi there, I'm Peter Forsgaard, a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we start talking about manual focus, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and also liking this video and commenting about the content, what did you like about it and all other things that I might ask you during the video. And we'll start with when. Of course, the obvious one is if you have manual focus lenses, vintage lenses that you use on your camera, then of course most of those lenses do not have a autofocus and if they do they might not work with your camera because it might be a different brand lens that is attached to a different body with an adapter. And of course if you like to use those and, and I'm one of those that sometimes like to use vintage lenses because they are just fun and, and somehow I've used them quite a lot way back when they were no when they went called vintage lenses and I'm, I'm really used to doing manual focus so it's not really a big big issue and and the times when I really like to use manual focus is uh, landscape photography and when it's really dark, you know, those dark scenes in, in a city or in, in forest or somewhere where there is not really a huge contrast, a, different, a difference, so that the autofocus might not be the fastest, even though I've never really had big issues with my Olympus cameras and I know other brands are good as well, so it not it's not necessary. But also then about manual focus, which is uh, not really, I could say that it is manual focus, but I a lot also what I do is to I choose the focusing point and then like manually I'm, you know, setting the focusing point to a certain point and then I use autofocus. So it's kind of like combining two things, first manually choosing the focusing point and then using autofocus to use that particular focusing point. So it's it's not in a way called manual focus, but it will help you to nail the autofocus if you're using a certain focusing point. I hope this makes sense. It was a bit of a long explanation about that, but I hope it, it explains. And some other things, of course, is macro photography, where manual focus is really, really important to, to know how to do, because sometimes it's really hard to use autofocus when you're doing macro. And also sometimes it's uh, also important to focus by moving the camera. That's also a one way of manual focusing. You're setting the focusing point to the nearest point when you're doing macro or, the, or not the nearest point but the closest focusing distance and then you move the camera towards the, the uh, subject and see when it's sharp. And what else? And yeah, of course, video work is something where manual focus is very important. If so, if you're doing video shoots, manual focus is something that you really should know how to do. And there also the moving the camera could be the thing. If, if your talent is going like this, sometimes uh, I use uh, autofocus and, tra and tracking because Olympus cameras has a very good autofocus in video, especially the M1 Mark III, which I'm using right now, has a very good tracking of faces when doing video. So that's what I usually do when I do interview videos. But sometimes it's useful to be able to do manual focus also. Then we talk about how. Well, of course, the simple answer is just turning the focusing ring until your subject that you want to focus is tack sharp. Of course, well, simple as that. It's kind of like a no-brainer. That, that's the way it is. But then, uh, how, what about the focusing ring? It's, a, it's very different in different cameras or different cameras, different lenses. Like some of the Mzuiko Premium or Mzuiko lenses has a very odd focusing ring. It just turns around. There is no hard stops in any way. And I think that's not a good lens for manual focus if you just you know go you have no idea where you where you are in that focus scale of course some of the newer uh, olympus cameras with the newest firmware has the focusing scale but it doesn't show you the um, the numbers it just just shows you how close you are to the closest focusing distance or 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 the furthest focusing distance it doesn't even have a uh, uh, what do you call a hyperfocal point i will talk about hyper hyperfocal focusing in the end of this video 
on these um, uh, Olympus Pro lenses, you have the MF clutch, which is very good, and you have hard stops here too, and, and it feels really solid and good, and you have good markings. And then what's really important is that you have the the f-stop numbers here, where you can see actually how far the uh, depth of feel is. So if you have, let's say that you have a focus to three meters, and with uh, f-16, you can you can, or let's let's say like four meters, you you can almost with the 45 millimeter go to infinity. And we have to remember that the wider the field of view is, the more depth of field you have. So focusing isn't that critical with uh, wider angle lenses if you're stopping down. You can even use, like I will explain what the pre-focus method is and hyperfocal method is in the end of this video. And then if you don't have the MF clutch, then of course you need to set the manual focus from the body. You just, in Olympus cameras, you use the super control panel and change the autofocus to manual focus. In Olympus cameras, you also have a focusing uh, mode that combines autofocus and manual focus. Actually, what it means is that first you focus uh, using autofocus and then you can fine tune the focus with manual focus. That could be, for example, if you're uh, photographing uh, something, then the autofocus nails the focus to the nearest point, but you want to focus on, on something else that is a bit further away, let's say like a bird that is uh, closer and you want to focus to the head, then you can just focus to the bird and then fine tune it with with manual focus. And that's that's a good way to learn. But I tend to have it off because sometimes when you're holding the camera, you accidentally uh, kind of change the focus or, or change what the uh, automatic focus has, has uh, given you, then it's, it's just kind of, it's, it's a bit messy for me. I don't really like to use it. But if, if you have a different way of uh, shooting, then that might be uh, something to, to consider. At, at least check it out and, and see if that's something for you. And then let's talk about settings. It's not that easy without any help to get that focus spot on. So you might want to use some help from the camera. And mirrorless cameras have several ways of helping you to make that focus spot on. The first one is magnify. When you turn the focusing ring, you will get a enlarged part of the scene and it will make it easier for you to focus. And then you have focus peaking, which means that you have colored dots on the spot where the focus is. And when you're stopping down, you can see that there are a lot, lot more of these uh, dots. That's because it will also show you your depth of field. Here you can see when you have a narrow depth of field, you have very little of, of uh, these uh, spots. But when you're stopping down, you will see how the amount increases. But when stopping down, it's really hard to tell where the exact focusing is. So it's not always that good. But you get a general idea how much there is depth of field in your image with, with these peaking colors. And also, I think most cameras have also the possibility to change the peaking color. So if you have a bright scene, you want to have a darker peaking color and, and vice versa, of course. But uh, get to know these helping tools that help you to make that spot on focus also manually. And before we get into the why, I will have a couple of extra tips that I already mentioned in the beginning of this video. But let's talk about why. I mentioned a few things already in the first part when I was talking about when. But uh, one good thing about uh, manual focus is that it will slow you down, especially in landscapes. You don't usually want to be uh, too fast or rush into the scene. You, you want to be, let's say that you want to photograph a sunset or something. You want to be there early, make your composition and, and check out where the sun is actually going to. Uh, set and then make your composition and make everything ready and wait. And that way you also will will slow you down when you're using manual focus. And also when, when going out outdoors just to photograph for fun other things than landscapes, you know, it, it will slow you down. Just try it. If you don't believe me, just go out and try. It will slow you down. And of course, in the beginning, if you're not really familiar with manual focus, you might lose a few images. But as you practice, you will get better at that and, and it, will, it will be a good thing for your photography. And then there are these special occasions. If you're doing uh, exposure blending or HDR, 
then manual focus is the best way. And also with time lapses and panorama images, it, it's an important thing to have the focusing distance constant when doing these special photo or doing special photography like HDR and panoramas or time lapses or something like that. And also uh, manual focus. If let's say that you are photographing birds that are in a feeding station, you might have your camera on a tripod and pre-focus to the uh, manually to the uh, birding station. And when the birds fly, you know that they will be in, in, in focus without you focusing every time. It's also faster. You can just concentrate on the, on the exact moment you want to make that photograph. You don't have to focus every time. But of course, if you have a newer body like EM1X that has a bird AF uh, recognition algorithm, then it might be a different thing. But in many cases, it, it's, a, it's not a bad thing that you have the focusing pre-focus to the, to the spot where the thing is going to happen. That's one way of using manual focus and, and very effective. And I want to know how much do you use, first of all, vintage lenses and how much do you use manual focus with autofocus lenses? It's interesting to hear. Let's, let me know in the comments down below. But then let's talk about pre-focus, which I already mentioned a bit in the beginning of this video. When you combine that with hyperfocal distance, you will, in best uh, cases, have everything sharp, so you don't have to sh um, focus at all. Let's say that you have a wide-angle lens and you set the aperture to 5.6, and then the distan distance in your lens, roughly about 3 to 4 meters, you will have everything in focus from 1 meter to infinity. And that's a very good way of, of focusing for street photography, for example. You can even use some gaffer tape to, uh, to uh, set the focusing ring so that it won't move while you photograph. So it will be on that particular distance all the time. And that's, that's a very good way of doing. And the same goes with the hyperfocal if you're doing landscape photography. There are apps that will tell you where to focus so that you will maximize your depth of field, which is usually something that you might want in landscape photography. But there is more info about hyperfocal and pre-MF on this video. You might want to watch that next. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.